What's up, first grade? Today we're back at it again with our book, The Secrets of Droom, The Journey to the Volcano Palace. But first, let's share some tips and tricks for what you can do to um, become a better reader. So books have a lot of characters. We've talked about it before. We have Neo, we have Eric, we have Julie, we have Princess Kia, we have Gal and Longbeard, the wizard. We have Max, Lord Spar, the evil nuns, even though they don't really have names. Now we have the King of the Lumpies, King Khan. Um, all these different characters come into play. But it's important for you to think about how these characters feel. Why? Because sometimes um, you're better able to connect with the character. And then also when it comes to things like your step test or reading test, we have questions that ask you things that are based on how the character feels or how the character acts. So today we're going to be learning how to identify character feelings. Okay, so first things first, whenever you're identifying character feelings, you want to look for feelings that, uh, for feeling words and actions. So what are feeling words and actions? Let's just go ahead and share some. So some feeling words would be sad, angry, mad, upset, and then actions. Actions are a little bit harder to tell feeling actions, but you have to kind of think about what you would do. Like if you were scared, you might be rocking back and forth. If you were excited, you might be jumping up and down. If you were nervous, you might be looking left and right or biting your lip or chewing on your fingernails. There are different things that you can do that signify or that tell you what, um, how a character is feeling. Number two in blue. Think when you felt that way. So however the book is describing, think about how you felt when you were, um, if you were in the character situation. And then number three, why do you think the character feels that way? Think about what's going on in the story or what just happened in the story that might make the character feel that way or that might have, um, make him feel differently. All right, without further ado, friends, we have chapter seven, The Fierce Beast. The four kids all stared at Demither. So it's true, he exclaimed. My mother is alive. I knew she was. I knew it. Why are you helping us? Eric asked the witch. I thought you were a friend of Spar. Friend? The woman shrieked. She rose up ten feet in the air. Her scaly skin rippled and twisted as she curved up towards the cave's ceiling. I am a friend of no one. So right there we have some key words that um, are telling us how this sire, um, how this monster Demither feels. So looking for um, words and actions. The woman shrieked. So she shrieks. She rose up. She stood up. And she is rippling and she's twisting and turning. She's getting really big. She's getting in your face. So, I'm thinking about some of you, and sometimes when you get angry... <laughs> Bless you, Miss White. Joshua. Anyway, back again. So, I know when some of you are feeling this way, when you get angry, you get a little loud, and you like to get up in people's faces. So, think about that. I'm thinking about you guys. And also myself. When I get angry, I tend to yell, um, just like she did. So she shrieked, she rose up in the air, she got in their face, and she said something loud. So that tells me that she's upset. Now, why do you think she's upset? Hmm, Miss White thinks that she might be upset because right before all this happened, Eric said, I thought you were a friend of Spar. So that tells Miss White because he said that, and then she acted that way and got mad. She probably is not a friend of Spar. Think about it. If I said that I, if one of you said, well, that you were friends with the boogeyman, mm -mm, I wouldn't like that either. I'd probably react the same way. Back to the story. Wait, he pleaded. I need to know. But the witch's scaly body slithered back silently into the dark pool. The water hissed loudly as she passed under it. 
Then the surface went still. Demither was gone. The kids looked at one another for a long time. It sounds like Spar is forcing the witch to do bad stuff, Julie said finally. Maybe he cursed your mother, Kia. I don't like it, Max said. Demither could be lying to us. Kia stared at the pool. We need the eye. Can the eye do good things too? Eric asked her. Can it, like, heal people and stuff? Kia nodded. Gallon told me once that the jewel does not, does what its owner wants it to. Cool, Neil mumbled. I wish my dog did. But it is dangerous too, said Khan. Even Spar was hurt by its power. Eric turned to Kia. We'll get the eye back for you. We'll do it, I promise. No matter. He never got a chance to finish. Clomp. Clomp. Heavy footsteps rushed toward the blue cave from the path outside. Hurry or we'll be trapped, Julie cried. She and Neil slipped out with Max and Khan scrambling behind. But Eric and Kia could make it. Behind these rocks, quick, Eric said to her. They jumped behind a low pile of rocks near the cave entrance. In marched ten nymphs. Between them crawled a large, strange, dark beast. It snarled and growled at the nervous-looking nymphs. The beast stopped at the pool's edge. What is that thing? Eric whispered to Kia. The princess shook her head. I don't know. The beast yowled sharply as if it were hurt. In the dim light, Eric could see that the creature had four thick, clawed legs and a long body. Its skin was black and bumpy from its large head all the way down to its large, spiked tail. On the top of its head were rows of large, pointed ears, like bat's ears. A bunch of ears, can you imagine that? Eric's stomach turned, just looking at the ugly thing. He swallowed hard. <clears throat> it's some kind of weird, horrible monster. I don't know about this, guys. Is this Spar's secret weapon, he asked. Eric struggled to keep his spoon down. <clears throat> Maybe. This is his secret. The one of my dream. The secret Spar thought I knew. He keeps a monster for a pet. Suddenly, the creature charged forward and leaped into the pool. It began to slurp loudly. Let's get out of here, Kia whispered. That thing could turn on us. Eric began to tremble. Wait. They watched the beast drink and drink. Eric turned to Kia. She looked at him. Then they looked back at the creature. Their eyes went wide with amazement. No, Eric gasped softly. It, it can't be. That, friends, is the end of chapter 8. Sounds like something pretty crazy is going on with this animal. What do you think is going to happen? I don't know. We'll have to keep reading.